So, how do you make your in-the-box mixes sound and feel analog? Well, if you're not lucky enough to have a big old analog desk like this beastie here, um, or something better, in fact, then, yeah, how do you make your mixes sound and feel analog? If you're working in something like Pro Tools or Logic, um, even Ableton, any, any workstation that kind of isn't Harrison Mixbus, you might want to mojo up your templates. Now, if you definitely, definitely, definitely want to stick in that workstation that you're working in, there are a few ways you can do that. So let's have a close look at the desk before we move on, just to see what it's all about. So see, see all these channels here. These are what you would call input channels. Um, they take a microphone or a line input and allow you to mix it into the main mix or send it off to, um, well, what was originally a 24 track tape. Um, so these buttons at the top really um, are telling you the destination. So either the stereo mix here, or one, two, three, four. We can press shift in to go to 13, 14, 15, 16. And these are literally just wires, <laughs> essentially, in the circuit that go off to the uh, multi track tape, if you had a multi track tape at the time. It's an old desk. Um, but you know, you would connect your, your audio interface to this and you would send off to those. Um, and that's how it was done. It mean, means that you can put more than one channel to a single bus. Or you can actually go into these uh, bus channels as well. Uh, and you can maybe put a compressor on all of the drums, for instance, or you could, you know, lots of different options. So um, these are sort of the bus channels. Sorry, missing bit on a knob there. Um, and they come up on these faders at the bottom. Now, obviously, there's bits of saturation happening at every point in here. So saturation on the mic as it goes in, saturation, we can drive these line inputs when we're remixing, we can push the output into the um, these group um, channel strips, and we can distort that a little bit, and then as we move on to the master channel, which is over there, we can um, uh, add a little bit more distortion, and that's the whole reason why analog desks sound like analog desks. Okay, so I hope that made a little bit of sense. Let's crack on and see how we can emulate that in um, an in-the-box mix. So hopefully at this point, you're kind of understanding that you've got input channels um, and then we have a load of bus channels and then we have our master channels. And that's really how a mixing desk like this functions. So we've got input channels, I've got bus channels and I've got a couple of master channels. Um, and at each stage in this process, there's a saturation effect being applied on the input stage, uh, on the, the buses, maybe if I've gone and recorded to tape, um, and then when it comes back, and then on the master fader, you know, the master channel. So we can really chew, we can, we can kind of tr clamp down those transients, we can chop off the transients, and effectively make our, our waveforms, if you want to think of it like that we can make our, our, our music fatter um, compared to the transients. And that's one of the cool things that analog desks do really, really well. Um, now, hopefully you can get close or all the way there on your in-the-box mixes using, you know, the techniques that we, uh, we're looking at here. So let's crack on and, and see the rest of it. So we are over in Pro Tools. Now Pro Tools is what I call a vanilla audio workstation. It doesn't impart a sound particularly to the audio, it just adds it up with bit transparency. Um, now as you know I would generally work in Mixbus. You can run Mixbus either bit transparent or you can run it um, with saturation and it's the saturation that we're going to be talking about that is really the key to creating an analogue um, sound. But first, let's look at how we make uh, this feel like an analog console. Well, we've already talked about input channels um, and group channels or um, bus channels and output channels. So how do I apply this to uh, a Pro Tools session? Well, simply by putting all my input channels, which are my tracks essentially, on the left <coughs> and then follow up with all my groups which shells, metal, bass, verb one and two, all that kind of stuff uh, there. And then I have my output channels, which is my master. And then I've created a track that I can actually print the mix to. And that's what we're listening through. So how is the routing done here? Well, um, it's taken me a little while to set this up, but I can save this as a template. Um, so 
IO, we go into IO. Um, in the bus drop down in IO, I've renamed all of my buses to relevant labels. And that means when I send, for instance, the kick, uh, well, all of the spot mics on the drums, <clears throat> when I send them out, um, I can actually send them to shells. Um, which is here, and that will um, come up as shells on screen. So I know that they're going to the shells bus, and then I've got a bus here, just an audio uh, auxiliary input, I think you call them in Pro Tools. Um, I've got shells, and then that goes on to mix bus. And mix bus is just another per stereo bus that I've set up uh, in the IO section there. And this master is assigned to mix bus. So what will happen here is that the um, the fader will scale the level, um, and then it will run through any plugins, and then I can pick that bus up, um, the output of that bus, post all this scaling and all that kind of stuff. I can pick that up on my uh, print track, um, which is what we're listening through. Um, so I've got a send to uh, the capture software that I'm using. And I've got to send to my master outputs on my antelope here. So um, it's on input monitor, so you should be able to hear. Oops, input monitor. So you should be able to hear this. So you might be asking me, or well, why don't you put the group? Um, buses next to the um, particular things that they're working with. So why is the acoustic guitar bus not next to the acoustic guitars? And that's one way of working. And it's possible to do that on consoles with a little bit of clever routing on the patch bay or with um, with an SSL, for instance, where you can actually pick up, um, you can use the channel strips to pick up buses. Now, I don't like to work like that. And here's why. I know that all my buses are on the right okay so unless i absolutely have to for some kind of creative purpose leave my buses into intermixed with um all my input channels i know that i can always jump to the right of the screen with my mouse i've got one of these apple magic mice things so i'm just swiping across and, and i know that i'm at my my buses just like i put my hand down to my right and i know that i'm at my buses on my console so, um, then we've got our master, obviously, um, and print track, and then click, just because you should have a click track on your sessions. So what have I done here? Well, you'll notice that there's a bit of 11 on um, these DI guitars, and that's just prepping them. Then every track, or every channel, has a saturator on it. Now, the saturator is, um, in most of the channels, is set as default. Um, this is the SSL um, native saturator. SSL kindly gave me the, um, the plugin suite to test out. Um, it's really very, very good. Full review coming soon. Uh, but the, the buses have chosen second order harmonics, which are in tune with, uh, like, valve style harmonics. The in tune with the, um, the, the sounds that are there. Uh, so we're not adding any weird weird out of out of tune sounds i've trimmed them so they um, are the same level great okay um on all the other tracks apart from the vocals i think yeah so the vocals i've given it a little bit of extra drive second order harmonics but on all of the other tracks we're just on default out of the box standard default setting okay then you'll notice every other track has um a uh, a setting, uh, a, a channel strip, and I'm using Solid State Logic uh, channel strip. You could use Avid channel strip, whatever you want, really. Um, I'm just doing this because I'm having a play with this, basically. Um, but the SSL channel strip, really great. Um, it doesn't give you the feedback on the EQ section, unfortunately. Um, I think that's Avid only. Um, and uh, that's a really nice addition to an analog desk so you can kind of set up so you can see what's going on with the EQs. I believe Sonar 3 had this when I used to use that nearly 20 years ago. Um, yeah, nearly 20 years ago. Um, at least 15 anyway. Um, and that was always really useful to see what was going on at glance with the EQs. So it's nice to see this in the uh, later versions of Pro Tools uh, more recently. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, these are just, the channel strips are just the, the default settings. Um, so let's have a listen and see what this sounds like uh, when I engage and disengage all my processing. So my saturators on every tra track and bus and my channel strips on every track and bus just in default mode. Ooh, one other thing, stereo bus compressor. I've just put a 34% um, uh, mix of the stereo bus compressor on because it was a bit aggressive um, and it's just, sort of you know standard mix glue compressor these are hard to get wrong you can basically put these in almost any position and they'll sound good um we could talk more about mix glue compression and how to deal with transients and stuff in another video but uh you want to hear it don't you so let's have a, a play and i will engage and disengage the processing So really what you want to be listening for is how much the snare pops out, how much the transients pop out and how full the whole thing sounds. And because I've saturated and level matched, um, sort of level matched, you should be able to hear that the, the processed sound with all the saturation uh, sounds much fuller, both harmonically and in terms of envelope. So the actual overall um, sound is more, um, uh, more kept in trim. So really what we're doing here is we are um, trying to sort of add harmonics like you would on a console if you were bending the console, bending the console. Um, we're trying to add a consistency so I know I can just jump in and I can go, okay, I know exactly where all the EQs are. I don't have to recalibrate my mind to go, oh, I've got an API on the vocals. Oh, I've got a, a Neve on the, the kick drum one, um, but the, the other mic on the kick drum, I've got an SSL and the other one I've got an Avid. You know, consistency is really important because it means we can jump between channels nice and easily and everything is in the same place. Um, you know, that's, the key of why working on a, on a real desk feels so good. So that's pretty much it apart from talking about sends. And as you'll notice, I've set up all the sends in advance. Um, I've actually disabled most of them because I believe it eats up some CPU time. Um, doesn't seem to be a problem running them, but um, you know, if, if we're trying to be con cons conservative of CPU power, we can do this. So I've basically set all the sends up on follow main pan. They are all on um, post send as they should be if they're effects. Um, and I don't have any effects actually put into these buses, but they would then go to the, the buses. Um, so all you do is you... Um, don't want to do that at the moment. Um, you, you, you know, you could show them all if you wanted to, but just for the sake of simplicity here, I just click and if I can remember the shortcut, yeah, it's can command click on them to engage them. And you can literally just grab and send, you know, whatever you wanted to send and you'll see them pop up. Should probably make sure that we're on bypass here. The reason why we can't see those is that I've got them set up wrong. Uh, so let's go verb one, and we should see a couple of that. There we go. 
so obviously you know it takes a little bit of setting up um and you just got to be um conscious that all your inputs and outputs are correct on your buses but that's the general gist of it all now hopefully if you're not um, a user of uh, mix plus and mix plus 32c if you use a workstation that's a bit more kind of vanilla and and um and doesn't have a sound this is a way to build up a sound within your uh, workstation so um any questions or any comments or if you think I've done this totally wrong and you think I'm an idiot, stick them down in the comments below and we can discuss and maybe do another video on why I've chosen the settings I've chosen uh, on this. And of course, have a look in more depth at that SSL plugin suite, which is looking very promising at the moment. So hopefully you can see how I work in projects when I have to work in a straight, um, you know, a super clean um, digital audio workstation that doesn't offer that kind of analog mojo that, um, that I get out of Mixbus. But, um, you know, it really is about um, a workflow dynamic that is sort of consistent uh, throughout all the projects that I do. And that's one of the reasons I can work um, quite fast, um, quite efficiently and effectively, and I'm not floundering. Uh, it's like it's like when you're driving a car, you know that, you know, even if you're in a different car, you kind of know the gear stick is there, and you kind of know the steering wheel is there, and the indicators, well, they jump around a little bit, but you, you, <laughs> you get the idea. Um, so it's about sort of consistency and, and making... Um, a, a template that actually works for you. Now, I'm not saying I'm right in every respect, um, but you know, uh, that's what works for me. Maybe it'll work for you. Have a great time, go and play, try it out, and I will, uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.